welcome you in the long morning name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a great pleasure indeed for all of us to be once again. We worship God with two songs, a few songs, and then we will go to the message. The title of the message today will be A New Paradigm. We pray that let's pray together before we go to worship. Father, I praise you in glory and honor. Father, it's because of my divine grace and favor that we are one singing together, together, Lord. We worship you and praise you and we hear that word. Let that word go in boldness and excellence, and in unchecked by any evil force in the presence of God to deliver the people and they will, and you make them manifest. The presence of God in Jesus' mighty name. We ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Let's sing to the Tamil song, the one English song. We'll start with the first song by the name of in the Kanmalaya Nagare. It's, it's my mountain of a refuge in the Kanmalaya Bye. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our, our Father. Uh, we've been meditating on the series of cosmic move in Malaysia, and I believe it's not only for this Malaysia, but also for all the entire nations, 200 other countries over the world. As uh, we are moving towards, I encourage and I thank you all viewers, uh, all those subscribers, and all those saints, uh, all those children, uh, apostles, uh, sons of God, uh, for your prayers, the uh, praise have been encouraging, and uh, your presence, and your love, and all the help that we have been given, it is only by the grace of God is possible. So uh, I will continue uh, the series on the Apostolic of Malaysia with a brand new title called The New Paradigm. The New Paradigm, uh, I will speak in English, uh, and then I will translate it in Tamil, and then I will go back to English. Uh, this is to hope all can bear with me, uh, just to give some room for all uh, both uh, viewers of a different language. Okay, let's move on to the word of God. Let's take the word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I let me read it for you in English. Therefore, if any man in Christ is a new creature, the old thing have passed away, behold, all things have become new. Okay, this is the word. Randam Korinthian, Anjam Adhikam, Pandela Vasanam. Oruvan Kathakul, Irpanangan, Aval Kuriye, Sirishtya Yirikran, Palaver Alam Odin Poyna, Alam Kuntayna. Okay, this is the word, this is the word uh, that we are going to talk about. Uh, if you look at this, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, uh, this is a very common and uh, very commonly misunderstood as, uh, scripture in the Bible. Because uh, most Christians would uh, sharply argue and say, after I take baptism, pastor, I still the same. I have not changed. Nothing has changed in my life. Uh, in fact, I, I look almost the same like what I was before. And uh, what is this? Uh, Paul is writing to Corinthians about new creature, new thing, old thing has passed away. So, uh, so in order for us to get a little bit insight, little bit insight, we got to read the same chapter of Second Corinthians chapter five verse four. Let me read it for you in English first. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, be burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon the mortality might be swallowed up of life. Look at Paul. Paul is talking something even more confusing at this point. Now what is he talking about? He is talking about a tabernacle, referring the human physical body as the tabernacle. Let me read for you. And that ye put on the new man. You see, there is something that you need to put on, like a coat. You got to put it on. He is saying, you got to put on a new man, which is renewed in knowledge. Okay, that's the point. He's telling, he's giving a point. So those people who are, are putting on a new man are those people who have renewed their mind in knowledge. Okay, after the image of him that he created. So if you know. And if you know and you have transformed or renewed your mind according to the image of your creator, then you are putting the new man. Today, uh, the biggest problem with us, most Christians, uh, we do not have any knowledge on the image of God himself. We don't have. And because we don't have such knowledge, uh, we tend uh, to live in the old paradigm, the old ways. So when you live in the old ways, you are not entitled to work in the new ways. Okay, let, let's really continue with this. The, the book writer of Colossians made it very clear. He says what? From the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 3, verse 10, he says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image that created him. Okay, this is Colossians 3 10. Just now, Ephesians 3 or 4 24 says, And put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and through holiness. Okay, I want to uh, bring you to a point, the word righteousness and holiness. Righteousness is right standing before God and holiness is something that you need daily and it's already inside you. You got to realize that. Okay, these are things that we will talk about. So today what I want to tell is this. Uh, this knowledge of God, this knowledge of God is a model. It's a model. Okay, if you look in the Oxford Dictionary, uh, Oxford Dictionary, the word model or the word pattern is called as paradigm. That's why the title of this message is uh, coined 
as the new paradigm. Okay, today what am I trying to tell? The new paradigm means the new knowledge. The new knowledge of God. If you, if you are afraid of the word paradigm, you can say the new knowledge of God. Okay, let's go to content. In this uh, message, I have three points to talk about. Three main points. I'll be talking about the first one. The first one is new thinking pattern or paradigm. Okay, let's read Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Okay, look at Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It says, Do not conform to this world, but be transformed in the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, God is uh, Romans, uh, Paul is writing, writing to the Romans, say, Don't follow the world. Don't follow the pattern of the world. If the world is following something popular, okay, uh, usually popular, the word popular comes from the word people. When everybody likes, then it becomes popular. Famous is like a flame. So when the, 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 the flame is gone, the famousness will no more be there. So what, what Paul is writing, don't run after the thing that is popular. Don't run after the thing that is uh, famous. But you got to renew your mind daily. This is what Paul is writing to Romans. And if you look at Romans 12, 1, how he is giving some, some details, how to do it. Number one, he says, Present your body as living sacrifice. No, he is not asking us to cut our body or cut our leg uh, uh, and put sacrifice. No. What is he saying? He is saying, you should use this body as instruments of righteousness. So the hand must only go and do the right thing. The eyes must only see the right thing. The thumb must only speak the right thing. Okay? The, uh, whatever part of the body is only meant to do the right thing. When if it is not the right thing, you are going to say no. This is what he is trying to tell in Romans 12, 1. If you look at, many people say, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, I am a Christian, I know the Lord, but I still not blessed. I have a lot of challenges to be, uh, to be faced and I find it is very difficult. I am telling you today's message should be the answer. Okay, in 3 John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, Thou may prosper in, in health, even as your soul prosper. So what is Paul is uh, John the, the book of Third John is writing is he said the prosperity or the health of the physical world is dependent on the prosperity of the soul. Okay, the prosperity of the soul. Soul. If I if you want to uh, I want to refresh to you. Soul consists of three components. That is your mind. That you think. Uh, your emotion. That you feel. And the will. That where you decide. So all these three portions must be prospering first. Prior to the prosperity that you can see outside. Today why people are not blessed? Because the soul is not blessed. Okay. It's a, it's a big subject. But anyway, I want, to, I want you to understand this. Okay. Important statement. Important statement. You see, if, if the soul wants to be blessed, the Bible is very clear about it. The Bible says, your eyes is the window to your spirit. That means what? Whatever you see is what you input inside. So what am I trying to tell? Your senses, especially your ears and your eyes, uh, is very very important whatever you put inside. And today, uh, this is a statement that I want to make to you. You cannot go anywhere where you cannot see. I, 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 I rephrase it. We cannot go anywhere where we cannot see. Before you can see something happening in the physical realm, you got to imagine it in the spiritual realm. You got to uh, know it, you must feel it, you must meditate on it, you must speak about it. In the spiritual realm, when it is fully developed, then you will find it give birth in the physical realm. So we will talk about only one patriarch of the Bible, I think you all know him, Father Abraham. Okay, this is about Father Abraham, there is no other, no other uh, uh, icons I will be talking, only about Father Abraham. Look at Father Abraham, Father Abraham was almost 90. And then God called him and said, mm, Abraham, come out of the tent. God asked Abraham to come out of the small tent and start counting the stars. But, you know, you can read that in Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. And he brought him forth abroad and said, look now towards heaven. Look now towards heaven and tell the stars. He's, he's asking to count. Tell the stars when uh, asking to count. If thou are able to number them. You know what happened? I want to bring you to the, to the, to the scenario. When I was praying this morning, God was showing me the, the uh, 
the scenario how it really happened. You know, uh, so this is my personal, you know, God was showing me and I want to share with you. Okay, this is additional info. Uh, uh, Father and I left a small tent and he went out and he was looking at the sky. And you know what, when God said that, uh, he, he counted, he began counting. He count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You know, and he was having a hard time because he couldn't count. But, but look at, look at the point that I want to tell you. Abraham did not resist God and say straight away, ah, I cannot count now God. He never said that. He was counting, 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 counting. And he was almost getting, uh, giving up. He said, oh, how come on, how to count and finish God has to count? Why he was counting, okay, I'm giving you the revelation. Why he was counting, he got the revelation. You know what he got the revelation? He saw the stars, the stars, and all the big stars and the small stars waving up from heaven and saying, Father Abraham, Father Abraham. He got this revelation. Then, God continued again. Genesis chapter 5 verse 15. God says now to Abraham, Abraham, you shall be so. Wow. That was how it was done. I'm giving you the sequence of the chronology. How it was happen? And now, Abraham, uh, he believed on God omnipotency. Omnipotency means is a supreme power of God. When you look at Revelation chapter 19 verse 6, um, you can see the angels are saying like this, For Lord God omnipotent right. You know, our God is not a human. He is God. He can do anything, anytime, any moment, at any split second. Not even need to speak. Just like that. He can do it. And you know, Abraham knew, knew this thing and he believed God and he got his blessing. And you know, at the age of 100, uh, he was having his own first uh, uh, own child, Isaac. Okay. No, I want to tell you what is the biggest problem with our paradigm. We Christians, we so-called newborn believers, we so-called super spiritual Christians, you have been carrying the Japanese calculator for a long time. You know what, what does it mean? The meaning is this. Every time when God tells you something, you take up the calculator and count. With the money that you have in your pocket, with the people that you have in your church, with the resources that you have, with the degrees that you have, with the education that you know, can this be possible? God said, that is old paradigm. Are you getting me? The new paradigm is this. The new paradigm is, men of God, sons of God live by vision. They live by faith. Faith and vision, they don't live by sight. I want you to be very clear. Don't live in the old paradigm by calculating what you can do, what you cannot do. It is not about you. It's about the vision and faith. You need to move in the vision and faith. That is why vision is so important in the life, Christian life. If you don't have vision, your, your entire life is useless. Okay? Uh, I'm not talking about that, but I want you to understand this old paradigm. We live by, remember this, we live by vision and faith. That is some of God. Okay, that's the paradigm that I want to tell. Please don't calculate. Please don't bring your Japanese calculator. Huh? All the time. Okay, I'm not against the calculator. I'm against the mindset of people. Okay. Uh, you can see another time. Another time in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. This story is when a lot uh, was separated from Abraham. Okay. And uh, let me read for you. And the Lord said to Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him, lift up now thy eyes. Again his eyes. Lift up again your eyes. And he said what? This time not up. Huh? He said look from the place where you are to the north, to the south, to the east and to the west. Now. This time he said now, bah, 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 don't look up. Don't look up to the sky. Look to the north, look to the south, look to the east and look to the west. And you know what Abraham did? He did what God said. That was a good thing behind Abraham. I love this man. Wish one day can meet him yeah? and ask him, how can you be like, like this? Okay? And look, read verse 15. And you continue reading verse 15, he says, And the land which thou seest will I give it to you and there and to be seed forever. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you see is yours. How far you can see is yours. How far you can see this side is yours. How far you can see is that is yours. And how far you can see at the back is all yours. I was imagining, when God was uh, talking this this morning, I was imagining how nice 
if our father Abraham would have had a helicopter like today, okay, if he would have had a helicopter, I think the problem of Philistine and uh, Israel problem will not be there because why? He could have taken a helicopter and see everything. The problem is they don't have such technology at the time. The eyesight view was limited. Today, today I want to tell you, church, listen carefully, all of you. You are having the same problem. You are having the limitation of sight. You don't know who you are. Because why? The gods of this world have blinded the mind of the people. You can read that in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom God of this world have blinded the mind of them which believe not. Listen, eh? which believe not. Okay? Least the light of the glorious Christ. Who is in the image of God shall shine upon that. Okay, I want you to tell you who you are. Okay, this is your identity. Remember one thing I want to tell you. Your spirit now has seated in the heavenly places. Okay, in Christ Jesus. And God has put everything under your feet. Your spirit, Jesus Christ, Father God and the Holy Spirit, we four of us discuss everything in heaven and decide what is going to happen on earth every morning. That is who you are. You got to understand this. That is the image that our God has given. You know, Satan, don't allow this thing to come into your head. You know, I tell you, people will show how come a spirit there. And then you might ask you, who, whose body is this? The body that you are bearing is the body of Jesus Christ. Clearly stated. Clearly stated. John chapter 16, verse 20 says, In that day you will know that I am in my Father and He in me and I am in you. What God is trying to say? We are the walking officers and the body of Jesus Christ. We are supposed to be, we are supposed to be the Jesus Christ of the land of Malaysia. We are supposed to be blessing people. Wherever you go, you must be administrating healing, blessings, anointing. In simple words, whoever get connected with you must be blessed. Then, then you understand the different. If you are not having so, then you are still living in the old paradigm with the Japanese community. Today, today, I want to tell you to you. Look at this story. Look at this story. Uh, 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 you know what God says wherever you see? So Abraham, uh, we need to come out of our tent. Okay? We need to come out of our tent. Which is our tent now? Today we have a tent. We put our own cocoon. What is our tent? Our tent is our human ability. Our tent is our circumstances. Our tent is we are looking at ourselves. So this is the tent that you need to get out from. You don't look at your ability. Have faith in God. In the word, have faith in God. You know what God is saying? God is saying, have God kind of faith. Okay, if you know your spirit, you sit with the Father in heaven, in Jesus Christ in heaven, you can speak to the mountain, you can speak to anything, and it will obey. Do you trust that? This is a new paradigm. You've got to trust that. When I speak, it will happen. Because that is the agreement. That's the agreement. The agreement is so simple. Whatever God tells you do, whatever you tell God do. That's it. So only this is possible for those who are in the new paradigm. It is not possible on those who are living on their own self-ability. It's not possible. Okay, you can talk to storms. You can speak to trees. You know Jesus by speaking to the fig tree. The moment you speak to the spirit, fig tree, he said, uh, fig tree, uh, since you're not giving me uh, any fruit, I'm just, he is, he's not angry with the tree. He is trying to demonstrate to the disciples that Jesus has power in his word. So you can also try that. You know, this is how we are supposed to be. And uh, faith, in Hebrew chapter 11, verse 1, it's very clearly stated. Faith is a substance that they hope for and the evidence of the thing not seen. You know, kind of evidence, when you go to court, you bring something as an evidence. So faith is an evidence. It is tangible. You can touch it. Even though you cannot see, you can touch it. It is an evidence of the thing that is not seen. So you must have faith. So you cannot, because remember, anything that you want to download from heaven, you have to use the currency of faith. As you are using money, currency of money in this world to do whatever a transaction, if you want to do any transaction in heaven, you must use the currency of faith. If you don't have faith, that is why Satan always will impose fear in you, doubt in you. You may think fear and doubt is a small thing. 
I am telling fear and doubt is a big problem. When you fear something, automatically your blessings is cut off. You know why? Because you are living in all paradigm. Whenever you have fear, you go to God. God, Jesus Christ, you are already defeated the devil on the cross. I am already taken the victory. You have taken the victory on the cross. Your word says so. I am healed. 1 Peter 2 24. By his stripes, I am healed. 1 Corinthians 7 1. God says, uh, I yes, put his righteousness into us that our spirit and our body we will be made righteous in Christ Jesus. So you tell God like that. And you say, Galatians 3 13, you say, God, uh, you have hanged yourself on the cross for the blessings of Gentiles to come to the uh, blessings of Abraham will come to the Gentiles. And you tell, speak to God, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. You tell God, God, you become poor for me to become rich. I am a rich person. I am a blessed person. I am a healed person. This is how you talk. And you say, I have no fear in any part of my life. There's no area in my life that I will fear. Okay, I think I'm getting it somewhere. Okay, this is what you need to do. Okay, so Romans chapter 4 verse 70. If you notice, he's talking again about Abraham. Abraham, Abraham was calling the thing which is not there as though it is work. Abraham was calling on things. Abraham was calling on his son, even though he never sees his son. Because by in verse 19 you can see, being not weak in faith. You see, Abraham not weak in faith, huh? Abraham was strong in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. See, he is already 90 years old. And he was about 100 years old. He is 100 years old, Sarah 90. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Sarah's womb also already died. But you know what? He considered they are still alive. They are still active. I tell you one more story later. I will give you another story of the real thing that happened. So number one, you got to understand. Number one that you got to understand is you must understand the new thinking pattern is about faith without any fear. And you cannot calculate and make calculation based on your understanding. That is number one. Point number two. Let me finish two points uh, and then I will go to Tamil then I will go to the last point. Okay, point number two. Start counting the stars when situation looks impossible. Today you may find your life is in a very impossible situation. Oh, it is totally not possible. Doctors would have said, uh, brother, you will live another six months. Or oh, brother, you will live another two weeks. Uh, your cancer has gone to stage four. Uh, they will say, uh, your death is, uh, uh, cannot be secular. Your court case is gone. Uh, your children is gone. Your business is gone. Your church is gone. This is the message for you today. Listen, God is trying to tell you this. We live not by vision, but by the sight of the Son of God. We Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Okay, I want you to do this. First, in this verse, they say, write down the vision. Okay, if you want to get healed, write down healing at what age. If you want to get married, write down what type of person you want to get married. If you want a financial breakthrough, write down what kind of financial breakthrough. You've got to be very specific with God. First, make it pain. I read it for you. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon the tablet. Write in a piece of paper. Write in your eye tag. Uh, write in handphone. Handphone sometimes problem. Huh? Virus go, everything goes off. I suggest you to write in a book. Okay. Then, verse 3. And the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and lie not. Okay. Lie not. It will not tell it. Wait until for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tell it. So once you have written it. Once you have written it. Now you go to visualize it. You've got to see yourself. See yourself in that blessing state. Okay? Okay. So the word of God, the word of God that you read every morning is your stars. I'm telling you another secret. The word of God that you read every morning is the stars that Abraham was counting us. Okay. So what you've got to do, you've got to get the word of God. Okay, let's see. You want to get healing? First Peter 2.24. You want to get blessing? Take whatever words you have. Put it in, the, put it in your book and start reading it. Start meditating upon it. Start counting it. God, it's coming. Thank you, Lord, it's coming. Thank you, Lord, it's coming. Thank you, Lord, it's coming. You start counting at that. Okay? You start counting at that. Okay. And you meditate. Meditate means imagine, imagine that you are already in that blessing. Okay, don't. The problem with you us is you always want to, you always want to talk about that situation. Please don't. Okay? 
I tell you one secret. Why Christians don't receive blessing from God? Christians don't receive blessing from God because they have a poverty stricken mind. Whenever you have a poverty stricken mind, when you go before God as if you don't have, God have no room to bless you. I, I repeat again. When you go with a poverty stricken mind, means you say, you go as if you are a beggar, you go as if you don't have anything. God have no place, no room to bless you. Wow. What a message. So people with poverty mindset is living in a wrong paradigm and Satan's big, this is the Satan's big trick. Satan's big trick is, is Satan will always come and tell and remind you that what you don't have. Okay? For those people who don't have money, Satan will always tell you all you got no money. For those people who don't have job, Satan will always tell you you got no job. For Satan got no uh, people who got no husband wife, they always say you are alone. Uh, you are going to die alone in the whole thing. So. He always remind you of what you don't have. You know what, what you got to tell. Hey, get gain me, devil. Who are you talking at? I and my father and my Holy Ghost and my Jesus Christ. We decide for them. Who are you to come and tell me? That's why Jesus looked. Even look at Jesus. When Jesus was hungry, Satan was so kind. You no, know? he bring the stone and say, you make the stone. He was very hungry. Jesus, he was very hungry. He was very kind to Jesus. You think it's kind? No! He is always will look at what you don't have. Okay. What you got to do, you must you must think that you already have and start calling for things that you do not see as though you got. That's why I always tell people, okay, let's say you don't have a child. You don't have a child. You take a picture of a baby, uh, put it on the wall. I think even even the outsiders, the, the hidden knows about it. And you start looking at the child playing it. You know, uh, at a time. Uh, I was giving some kind of messages to certain youths and they were not happy, not changing and I said, God, how to change these people since they are not getting anything out of it? You know what God said? Ask them to write down their goals for the next five years. And I asked them, okay, uh, I'm going to give you one day, one day time to go back and write all your goals. So they brought it to me and he said, now you pray, you lay your hands and you bring back. Make a copy and put it in a box in the, uh, in the place that we are gathering. And you know what? Almost 70%, almost 70%, all those things that they wrote came to pass. You know why? Because vision, vision is something will make you. You are not making the vision, but mission, vision will make you. For pastors, I want to tell you pastors because are watching live, I want to tell you, you want your church, you have 1,000 members, start dreaming for 1,000 members. Start dreaming for it. As I am dreaming, I am dreaming myself, a big dreamer. Uh, dreaming, uh, I see you are preaching to thousand now. Oh God, I am preaching to thousand now. Okay? Uh, such a preparation. So, when you have it in the spirit realm, then only you can have it in the natural realm. Don't, don't say, don't work out. You know, some, some of us, uh, I think we try to work too hard in our flesh. It won't work. It won't work. Okay. Uh, then this is another scenario that God brought me and showed me this. Okay, what happened is like this. This is a scenario between Abraham and Sarah. At this point, they are not Abraham yet. Uh, uh, Abraham and Sarai. Okay, Abraham and Sarai. But then, uh, this is a scenario looks like. Scenario looks like uh, Sarai has prepared uh, lunch for Abraham. Lunch for Abraham. This is a scenario I saw and I'm just sharing with you. Okay, please bear with scholars don't throw stone at me because this is personal vision and I just want to share with you for one notification. Okay, uh, Sarah was prepared a lunch for Abraham and he was calling uh, down the field. The field is quite far and he's uh, uh, calling Father Abraham. He's not using uh, uh, Abraham, huh? Abraham. He said Father Abraham. Okay, Fa Abraham means father of many nations. Huh? Okay, he called Father Abraham three times. Father Abraham, Father Abraham, the lunch is ready, come and eat. You know, when that sound was transmitting, when the town was sound was transmitting to the meadows and uh, the place, the village, the people of the village laughed at Sarah. You know what they say? Oh, this lady is so desperate to have a kid and she has gone insane, insane, kid, huh? insane, and they continued. And they, you know what they, what they say? This is exact word, huh? and they continued like this. Sarah don't even have a cat at home. She don't even have a pet at home. How can she be the mother of many nations? Wow! And, and the second scenario continued. And the next scenario is like this. 
Abraham answered back. Abraham answered back. Now Abraham answered in not Sarah. Abraham answered, Sarah. Sarah means what? Mother of many nations. I am coming back now. Get a hot tea as well. Wow. I said, what? What is it? Abraham was telling Sarah, you get tea also for me. You know, when the people heard what Abraham was answering, you know what they said? Uh, he also in the same boat. You know what? Two old Sinai people trying to get babies. That was that was the exact scenario they were in. Totally impossible. Totally impossible. Biologically, moved it. Not possible at all. But look at Abraham. He was calling Sarah as Sarah. Sarah as Sarah. And Sarah, Sarah was calling Abraham Abraham. Why? He trusted on the word of God. And when you say something about your vision and dreams, please don't tell everyone. Because some people will shut you down. But what am I telling? At times, at times, people will look and laugh at you and say, Sinai people. Sinai means Ila, huh? Sinai people. Okay. okay. This is a good news that God has for you. Bring out from God. Listen to this. When things are impossible, this is the best time in your life. This is what God tells me this morning. I want to bring it fresh. From 2 o'clock in the morning until now, no sleep. Because why? God wants me to tell this to you. Listen again. When times are impossible, this is the best time in your life because you are the Abraham and you are the Sarah. Says the Abraham. Wow. So when I heard it, I said, Wow. Wow, oh, Father, it's impossible. So you are saying, I am the Sarah and I am the Abraham. What is he telling? You are going to be blessed. Today your business might be at zero. Today you may not have any income. Today your health might have deteriorated. Today your, your business or your ministry has gone down. All your people who trusted all left you and go. God says, you are Abraham and you are Sarai. Rejoice for I will restore you. Now, I'm not giving you a message of prosperity. I'm just sharing what God is sharing me and asking me to tell you. And I believe if you believe, you will receive the glory of God this afternoon upon this year. So what am I suggesting to you? The new paradigm. Please do not speak about your condition. Please. Don't talk about the bank thing. Don't talk about the medical thing. Don't talk about it. I can tell you uh, one, one, uh, uh, one testimony of a woman having a cancer of throat. This is, this is from another friend of mine. I don't want to mention him. Now this lady came and to ask to pray. And you know what the man said? Go and write. I by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed one ten thousand times. And, and the man said, the pastor said to the lady, I also every time you write, you confess, confess, confess. And the lady left the church for some time. I uh, couldn't see her, the pastor didn't see the lady. Uh, after a few months, the lady came rejoicing. And uh, she can talk properly because she has seen a cancer of asphyllus, couldn't talk, but now she's talking very 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 fluently. And the pastor asked him, sister. She said, how come you can talk so, so well? You know what she said? I forgot my sickness while I'm confessing. And before I can finish confessing, I can speak clearly. And you know what? She's 100% healed. Wow. Today I want to tell you, if you have a condition of your life that is challenging you, you go and take over of God, start taking a book, write it and confess it. Do it brother, do it sister. I'm telling this is your God talking to you. Your other father is talking to you. This is the way to do it. Don't you ever talk about your condition. Don't you talk about uh, what the devil is trying to tell. No, the devil will always will come and give you the wrong paradigm and he keep in reinforcing that what you don't have. Okay? You know how the devil talks? I tell you. I'll show you. I'll give you some example. The devil will always tell you. He's very kind to you. He will tell you so pity. You know what the devil will say? No. There's nobody beside you, brother. You are alone. See? Nobody helping you. Very Christian. You very Christian. Speak to you. And then you say what? Just take one cup of this uh, lehat liquor. You will forget your life and your problem for a while. Or you say, oh, to the woman or the man, you say, why don't you go and talk to the lady for a while? At least you get some comfort. You know what? End up in wrong relationship. That is how the devil will try to talk to you about your situation. Don't you buy it. That's a wrong paradigm. You are getting the wrong input in your life. Today your Abba Father is announcing. I'm telling you, listen. You have a physical body to call to. That means what? You can speak. If you are dead, you cannot speak. 
That is why you are so precious in God's hands. Animal cannot speak, vegetation cannot speak, you can speak. Because you can speak, you can talk, so you have a physical body, you have to qualify for the blessing. Why are you living in suffering? To qualify for the blessing. You can call, you have the Bible in your hand. Okay, I show you. I have my own Bible in my hand. You have the Bible on your hand, which you can count and meditate on the word. And you have the right relationship. The creator of heaven and the earth is your father. What else you need to know? Tell me. What else you need to know? You don't need anything. So today I want to tell you point number three. Point number three. So you say, Pastor, now I know the new paradigm about faith, about uh, counting stars, meditating, writing it down, confessing it, I understand all that. So how to do it? Okay, this is the last point. Let me finish first in this and I'll go back to the table later. Okay, point three. How to operate in new paradigm? How to operate in new paradigm? Number one. First one, okay? Watch carefully. Don't worry about the text. I will send the text in real generation. I will send in all our self group for free, all type already. Upon completion of this message, it will go to you within minutes. Don't worry. Don't bother about the text, writing text. I will give it to you. Okay. This is what you should remember. How to operate the new paradigm? Number one, realize that you are already in the image of God. Number one. The realization must come that your spirit is seated in heaven. You, your Father God, Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ decide everything in this world. Realize this. You must have your realization first. Number two, you must realize that you are already fully holy and righteous. There's no room for darkness in you. So all you need to do is you've got to maintain the body, the body that you have, the spirit that you have and the soul that you have in the holiness of God. Now no chance of anything bad thing comes. Even if a bad thing comes, creep, just give a kick to the blood. Cat loss you devil. Dare you come to me. Dare you speak to the Son of Man. Dare you speak to me. Who are you? Get up. This is how you should speak to the situation and devil. This is how you should speak. So, what you need to do? First, you realize. Second thing, you maintain your physical body as a living uh, instrument, a holy instrument of holiness. By fear of God. Okay, I'll tell you one thing. The word fear of God is totally people don't understand. Fear of God is not uh, scared of God poking your head or you know, poking your body. No, 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 that's not it. Fear of God is a component that is in the Holy Spirit. It is a deep, another operation of the Holy Spirit. You can read Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. There are seven different operations of the Holy Spirit. And you read, you can read, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of wisdom, the Spirit of might, the Spirit of concept. And you can't understand and the fear of God. The fear of God is a function of the Holy Spirit. I think I've already made a preaching before in the previous uh, series. What am I saying? The fear of God is actually what makes you to receive your power and blessings. You must have the fear of God. Today, Christian church, they know about how to love God. But loving God is not enough. You must have the reverential fear of God in order for you to present your body as a living sacrifice. So what you should do daily? Daily you must have the character of new paradigm. Write it. This you want to remember you can write it. Character of new paradigm. Character of new paradigm. Okay, number one. Only seven. Don't worry, I just read, I will read for you. Then later I can send the text you can read back. Number one. You must have your daily salvation. Okay, if you want to remember it, you go and read about the armors of God. Okay, I'm just giving you that armors of God for you to remember uh, so that you cannot forget. Okay, number one, you must get your daily salvation from God. So salvation is the right thinking. That is why it's called as helper of salvation. So the mind has to have the right thinking pattern. You know, Satan do what? Satan puts strongholds strongholds, thoughts in your brain and you know what? And in that thoughts there is giants living in. Okay? The giants, if you look at the Ten Commandments, the first the five commandments is talking about God and God's nature. The balance from this number six to number ten is talking about giants. The giant of lying, the giant of killing, the giant of poverty, the giant of adultery. All these are giants. The giants are living there. And that is why you get angry. That is why you can speak lies so easily. That is why you, you, you get into last letters so easily. That is why you talk about people so easily. You know why? 
because there is a giant living in your mind. That spirit, that spirit is a thought living in the strong man, in the stronghold. The strong man is living in the stronghold and you've got to demolish it. What you got to do? What you got to do? You've got to renew your mind by reading the word of God. Number one. Read the word of God. Cleanse your mind. Always, always, always use this verse. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. This look at the cross of Jesus Christ. Look at Jesus hanging on the cross. Look at the blood uh, flowing through his body. Tell Jesus, Jesus, take your blood and put upon apply upon my head. That my mind that I think will be holy. Let my body be holy. Let my spirit be holy. Do that. Do that daily. When you ask like that, God will be very pleased. So the giant of fear, giant of doubt must be dealt. As I told you, fear and doubt is not a small issue, it's a big issue. Whenever there's fear coming, that means there is an anointing of the devil. Whenever anything creeps, let's say your office, when you go to office, you feel like unhappy. There's something is wrong is happening there. You've got to pray. Don't allow any fear to come into your life. Please make sure, try to live a life that is yes and yes and no is no. That is the life. Spirit of anger. Sometimes at times we can even be preachers, we can be even pastors. At times I also had this before trying to change. This anger will come from within. Don't know from where it comes from. All of a sudden it comes out. It's a giant. You're going to kill it. Okay? Lust. Jealousy. Covered pride. False. False accusation. All these are giants. So you've got to remove all this in that head, in your thinking. Number two. Number two. Stand. In straight line with God, this is I I I associate this with the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is very simple. Righteousness is standing straight with the person. Okay, just like how the moon. You see, moon is not burning, but because the moon is aligned with the sun, the moon is getting the sunlight and reflecting to the earth at night. So what God is saying, you must stand straight with me, and you stand straight with me, you will start radiating my Glory. So this is what you're going to do. Huh? You've got to live in. Right? So knowing that in your mind uh, this morning, you know what you must know? You must understand one thing. You must know what is righteousness is simply like this. You must know what is in the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must know what is in the mind of our, our Father. So when you go in prayer, you will discuss with our Father. And then when you come out of the prayer room, you start doing it with all your heart. That's all. That is what it means by righteousness. Number three, truth. Okay, I, I coined this as belt of truth. Belt of truth. So there should not be any secret sin. Secret sin or secret lie will take you out of the secret place of God. Because look at Psalms chapter 91 verse 1. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. And you know what God says? Whoever is righteous, they live in a secret place where devil cannot, devil cannot trace. Off radar, you know, like a, like a plane off radar. Uh, they don't know where the plane is. So do the devil cannot see where you. When you are living in a secret place of God, but when you have a secret sin, the secret sin will cancel your secret place out. So please don't. So what do you need to do? You need to decide today. From today, I'm not lying. I'm going to tell as it is. Let's say you already like. You already like something, you must make correction. You must tell like that. Uncle, auntie, brother, sister. It actually was like that. I exaggerated a little bit. I'm sorry. Try to do it. Try to do it and see. The moment you do that, the anointing of God will flow in your life. I challenge you. I've tried it. The anointing of God will abundantly flow. Because my God said, look, look at my son. Look at him. Look at my daughter. She is doing it. And this is what the whole heaven is watching at. Watching at our behavior and I'm talking. Number three. Number four. I'm going quick, huh? Don't worry, so I'm finishing already. Number four. Rejoicing and joyful mode. You got to be in always joyful and rejoicing mode with readiness to impact people with the answer that they need. Okay, I read it again. Joyful or rejoicing mode with the readiness to impact people with the answer that they need. Okay, I'm telling you this. You can coin this as shoe of peace and gospel. Okay, the armor of God, true of peace and gospel. You can coin it, associate it so that you can so don't forget. Okay, it's like this. People don't want your preaching. Listen, all of you, listen, listen, all children, listen. I love you so much. 
People don't want your preaching. People don't want a message. People want answer to their problem. Are you getting me? So what you need to do is, you got to give them the answer. Automatically salvation will come. Automatically they will be added. If they are sick, you must, they must be healed. So if they are having a family problem, you sick. If they are childless, the child must give birth. That is what it is. That is how you are supposed to be. And it only can be happen when you are in the joyful and rejoicing mode. This is where it is missing. Christians, listen. This is a very important part. All of you must listen. You know, Christians are missing it. They are doing three things. You got to desire to do good for yourself first. Number two, you got to desire, you got to desire to do good to others. And number three, you got to administer, administer and speak vision to people. I'll go one by one. I'll go to number one first. Desire to do good thing for yourself. How? Okay. Do everything joyfully daily. You know what? If you go to work, you must go to work with joy. At least you have a job to work on. And you have money to be receiving at the end of the month. If you are studying, study with joy because you have a privilege to study. Okay? You still can go to school. If you are driving, driving with joy because at least you have a roof over your head. Rain is not falling on you. If you are serving people, do with joy because all your good works is recorded in heaven. Okay, don't care. People, people say good, people say bad. It's not none of the business, brother. None of the business. Sometimes people make use of us. We know they're making use of us. It's okay. Still do good and go. Like Jesus. Jesus knows these people are crucifying me. And Jesus said, yeah, Father, forgive them. For they don't. You know what he's trying to tell? I don't care about people. How they behave. What is important? It's recorded in heaven. If giving. If you are giving, give with joy. You know what is a, what what is actually how I, I can give it to a illustration of giving, giving whatever help, money, time, whatever. Giving is a process of upgrading your pipe channel of blessing. Today we have two inch pipe channel. Okay, two inch, huh? uh, two inch not me. Uh, two inch is uh, twenty four uh, inches. Uh, two inch uh, pipes. God is about to make it to thirty six inches. You know why? The moment you give. The size of pipe is going to become bigger and bigger and bigger. The more you give, the more bigger you become. This is the problem with Christians. They think what? The more they give, the more pocket they become. Hi ho. That is why, you know, when it comes to giving, they are so difficult. And that is why they are living in body. Because there is no, no at all understanding of joyfulness in giving. You know, when you give to God, you know what God says? Hey, God, son. So you think your, your money is so big? Ah, oh, you put one thousand. I will add another three zero to it. I will give back to you one hundred thousand. Then you say, God, oh, you give one hundred thousand. Come on, I I I give I will give one fifty thousand now. And God say, oh, okay, now why you give fifty thousand? I put another three zero in the back five million. You know what am I trying to tell? Giving is not grudging. Enjoy it. It's an enjoying process because it's all done. So today the joyfulness is not there in ministry. Go ahead and say, pastor is telling people, uh, brother, uh, can you do this for me? And the brother will say, always me la. Nobody else are in this church. Why do you need? Oh God. Don't do it. Uh, no, please, please don't touch. Please don't touch and do it. Always say, it's always me. It's only me. Okay, I'm telling you, the secret is this. Whenever you do with joy, 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 I'm not, not happiness, but joy. You do with joy. This is the place where you draw God's anointing and grace in your life. Please do it. That's why when a project is open, okay, any project, whatever project, you must be the number one to volunteer. I, I must, I do it, I do it, I do it. Try it. I challenge you. So many young people come to me. Uh, they come to me. Uh, some are in diploma level. Some they come as first uh, degree. You know, most of them come to me not with good grades. They come with CGP or poor CGPs. But the moment when they finish, we turn them into lecturers, we turn them into professors, we turn them into engineers, we turn them into... You know why? It's because this is the anointing behind. I'm telling you, God wants God to bless. And that's why today the Bible generation, I'm so happy for you because you can give. God has blessed you. You know why? It's because you knew that the act of giving in joy, volunteer. 
Nobody need to ask you. Nobody will have to uh, ever have to point your name. Please don't wait until that. Take it immediately. Okay? I myself, I want to tell you, it's not about me, I want to tell you. Every time before I do preaching, you might laugh at me when I tell you this. It's a real thing. No? Even my wife don't know. Uh, I will make sure I sweep the floor or I clean something before I do the preaching. You know why? I do that uh, to get grace from God for the preaching. You may say, oh my God, this is where is to think about. This is how you get grace from God by serving people. If you are cooking, joyfully cook because at least there is somebody to eat your food. Okay, if you are doing something, joyfully do it because God has blessed you to become a giver. This is doing good for yourself. Number two, desire to do good things to others. Okay, this is like this. Give, uh, enjoying giving and helping uh, because God has made it possible to help others. Okay, remember this. Uh, it has to be genuine. It has to be genuine. Even though, even though uh, they might take you to granted or uh, they might uh, they might use you. You know they are using it, but it's okay. It's still okay because why? You must do good. I already, I think I already covered number two. Number three. Number three. Okay, what you got to do in the? This is I'm talking about point number four. Huh? Point number four. Joyfulness. Huh? That is show of peace and gospel. Something about that. Okay. In this one, administer vision and speak life into people. What you should do when people come with sickness? Don't worry. You tell them a date when you're going to get healed. Boldly. Ah, okay, you may say, what pastor, how if it doesn't happen? It will happen. It will happen because you are representing heaven and you are supposed to speak it out. You know what God wants? God wants somebody with human flesh to speak. That's what God says. Son, you go on. I know, this is the paradigm that you need to live. You got to speak it. You know what usually I do? I personally, myself, I do, I give vision to people. People come to me like that thing. Today, they make I don't uh, talk about it because I think you all know what I'm talking about. When we give people vision, when we tell them this is how you're going to be, the vision will make them. Now, now prophesying that some of you, uh, they're going to be big CEOs of companies, big millionaires and billionaires coming in, in the world generation. Uh, you know what I mean? I God says, son, good, do it. Let's do it together. Heaven is agreeing with whatever we say. So look at how powerful you are. This is how you should, you should administer the vision and speak life into the people's life. Tell them the time and ask them this question. Do you agree? Do you have faith that God is going to do it? Just as how Jesus was asking. Every time before he did, he would ask this question. Do you believe? Do you have faith? Do you believe? Do you have faith? When the moment they say yes, you pray with them. The moment you pray with them, you believe it's done. After that, don't even think about it. Because the job of finishing the job is not yours, it's God's. Heaven has already recorded. Petition has been made. The process will take place. God will send legions of angels to the earth to finish the task. And all you need to wait is for the good news. And most times, uh, our uh, Christian fellow brothers won't die. Because why? They're okay, are you ready? They don't call. They will call only after the second sickness coming. This is another problem with Christians. I don't know what is wrong with them. With them. Always remember to be thankful for whatever God has done. It's not about us. It's about your Creator, your our Father. Okay, number five. Let's forget about it. Number five. Number five, I call it as a uh, sort of spirit or the Word of God. I, I call it a different way in paradigm. List down the scriptures to be confessed and list down the names of people to be prayed for. I want you to do it practically today. What you do, take a book, write down all the scriptures that you want to claim, that you are counting for, the stars that you are counting for. And also, in the same book, write down the names of people. Today, if you notice in the revival generation, we are even praying almost on 600 people every day, two times. Woo! So I see, that's what I was interesting. And last week, I think uh, on Friday, uh, what gave the list for the, all the sultans and the kings? There comes in all the sultan kings. We are praying for kings now. And uh, next week, uh, all the presidents and uh, uh, prime ministers of uh, 196 countries is coming in next, next week. Whoa! I said, God, you keep adding. I'm happy. That's why you're praying. You cannot finish one hour. No way. Your technical prayer, if you try to do, 
It's super fast. I tell you, it's super fast within 30 minutes. So your prayer can never be less than 30 minutes. You start praying the list. You can easily go up to two hours. Easy. Okay? Alright, we're not talking about that. So what you need to do? Take a book, write it down the scriptures, write down the list. After that, you do this. You read it. First, you read it. Number two, after you account, write down, you read it, you meditate upon it. And then you speak it, confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it, confess it. You do these four things. Okay? First, you write down. Second, you read it. Third, you meditate. Fourth, you confess. So, that's all you need to do. After you confess, you tell like this. Repeat after me. We all repeat after me. I am the Christ Jesus of Malaysia. Repeat after me. I am the answer for this land. I and my father will decide everything for all human. Animals, vegetation and creation. Do that. And creation. Do that every, every day. Start doing that. You know what? The kingdom of hell will be, will be shook. This is new paradigm. I'm talking about new paradigm. The kingdom of hell is shook. And you say, my God, this guy has come. Now, today now I'm practicing uh, talking to uh, rain, uh, talking to animals. And I say rain, I say rain, stop. It has to stop. And it will stop. So I'm practicing. I want you to practice like that. Talk. Talk and do it. Go to a tree and say, I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are supposed to be fruitful. I want to see your fruit coming in. Now, uh -huh. talk to them. Don't talk, don't, don't talk negative. Talk positive. Talk to them. Talk to them. And you know what will happen? And it will so. Okay, number six. Number six. A shield of faith. Okay, this one, I coined it as God kind of faith in New Paradigm. God kind of faith. Okay, the word faith, the word faith is a key or root word of faithfulness. Faithfulness. Okay, what am I going to tell is this. People who have faith, they are always going to be faithful. Today, so many people in, in the ministry or even at home, they are not faithful. Because why? They don't, they don't have the core value of faith. Be with your pastor. Stay with your own church. Don't run, don't hop like a grasshopper from one church to the other. We in the other generation, we want to see all church blessed. I'm telling you once more time, never come to us for membership. We are not giving you any membership. We want, because all of this, all of you are ours, is the Father's belonging. We are not going to give that. What am I trying to tell to you is, be faithful to your own preacher. Be faithful to your own pastor. Be faithful to your own place. Do it. Stand alongside with pastor. What are you about to do? I am coming. I am driving the car for you. I am doing this for you. Encourage the ministry. Don't keep on giving headache. Oh my goodness, this is faithfulness, huh? Shield of faith. If you look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, it says, That ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing and fruitful in good works. Those people, those people, faithful people always will be fruitful and they will always be doing good works. I'm telling you. That's why sometimes even your pastor provoke you, he poke you left and right, left and right, so you still don't care because you're not doing for the pastor, you're doing for who? Creator. If you look at their story, Elijah, Elijah, Moses, Joshua, uh, do you think they had a nice time? Do you think Elijah is a nice time with Elijah? Elijah? No. Elijah was having trouble. That man is trying to, uh, trying to leave him halfway through. He said, no, 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 I'm coming. No, 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 I'm coming. No, 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 I'm coming. They, none of them had good times, you know. But they still remain. Because what? This is the calling in Elijah. So stay along with your Moses. Stay along with your Elijah. Stay. Do it. Do it for your own pastors, okay? Uh, and if you look at the word faithfulness, that the word is in Colossians 1 11, it says, Strengthen with all might according to glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Patience and long suffering is the one who will give you the joyfulness. So you got to, long suffer means what? You got to bear them. Just like your child, even though the fellow can be naughty, even the fellow sometimes no one listen to you, you still love him, right? Same gossip. So don't jump from tree to tree. Okay, that's why sometimes divorce, huh? I cannot understand. If people uh, married, uh, uh, they should not just. In fact, for me personally, divorce should not be ever even in your own dictionary. Take it out. It should not be. You cannot be jumping. You like it or you don't like it, you have to leave it there. You pray until the person 
change. Okay, that's it. That last one, the last point. Okay, all prayer. This is the the same words. All prayer, all prayer. God is asking your body to be the reservoir of prayer. You must be full of prayer every morning before you go to go out of the room of the prayer room. I believe you have your own prayer room. Today, lately, for almost around two weeks, God is asking me to pray outside. So I'm going outside of the house and I start looking at the sky and start counting at the stars and talking God stories and everything under the sky. We talk everything, literally everything we talk. Okay. So. But I want you to go to your room and be full with the presence of God in prayer. Okay? And you know what God says? Luke chapter 19 verse 46 says, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it dense of hours. This is Jesus talking to the people. Today, what are you feeling to your body? All the unwanted junk. Some of you eating all nonsense. Bad, red, flying, creeping. Hey, everything. Oh my God. You're feeling the body. That is on the eating part. The body watching. Oh, all crap. Nonsense watching. So you cannot make it as a dent of purpose. And you don't say it's my body. I, I, I thank you, Pastor Rajkumar, for giving me this uh, teaching uh, lately on your series in Christ. Uh, most of the time, this is it's my body. What? I can do anything I want. No, 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 no. That is wrong. Thank you, Pastor. This is God's body and you have no rights at all to use it for your own. Oh, I got it, I got it at last. And I was rejoicing and I hear that word message from him. Rejoicing. Okay, second Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 says, Know that not that thy body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is already inside you. No matter whatever you do, he's still with you. And he is grieving. Because our actions and everything that we do is not pleasing. These are the three things. These are the three things I'm finishing uh, that, that you need to have in order to live in the new paradigm. If you don't understand, you can replay this video and read it again. I come to a conclusion. The golden rule is this: What am I saying? May, may rock your heart. You got to become like a children in order to enter the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 says, "Verily I say unto you." Except ye be converted to become little children, ye shall not enter to the kingdom of heaven. So God, you know what God is saying? You must become like small children. Not to be ignorant, but to be innocent. Like small children. The rule is this. You, the word adult is the key word for adultery. Why adultery? Adultery means, adulterating means, is putting impurities into a pure thing. That is what it means for adultery. Okay, when you say that the material is adulterated, that means what? Some other metals are already put into the pure gold. So you need fire to refine it. Today, what God is saying? You cannot grow as an adult. You got to be like kids in order for you to come to the kingdom of heaven. What? Wow. You know, when you are before, before 10 years old, 12 years old, you have no problem. Uh, everything you tell today, everything to. After 10 years old, your mom tell this one, huh? you, can, you don't tell either, you tell like this, teaching you how to, how to cheat. Why oh, your father telling you, I'm going to tell her, I'm not in the house. No, 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 no. <laughs> and then you become expert. After 13, 14, you guys, oh, you, you know how to hide, you know how to see the whisper, you know how to delete, you know how to delete the browser, the history, all secret. Ooh. So, what God is saying, you got to turn back to become as children. So, why you need to become children? Number one is to uh, to receive God's message. Let me read for you why you need to become children. Number one, Mark chapter 10 verse 15, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not believe the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter it. So in order for you to receive the kingdom of God, you must become a child. The new paradigm is about being a child. Okay? Number one. Number two, why you must become child? It's for you to learn to humble yourself. Read Matthew 18 verse 4. Whosoever shall humble himself as a little child, the same is greater than in the kingdom of heaven. You know what God says? Anyone who humble himself like a small child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Don't fight. I talk love. I ask the kid. I bishop. Your bishop, your archdeacon, your professor, your doctor, uh, your technologies, TS, GS, MS, GS, whatever you can put A to Z in front or A to Z in the back. All nothing, brother, I'm telling you. 
Because God has given us most of the title already. But I am still telling you, all of them are nothing. Nothing you are going to bring. The only thing that title you are going to bring, if you want to be the greatest in the kingdom of God, you are going to be like a small child. Whew. I was rejoicing. The new paradigm. Number three. Never. Luke chapter 18 verse 16 says, Never stop anyone from getting blessing. Okay, look at number this. Luke chapter 18 verse 16 says, And Jesus called unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. So, if you are blessed, you are supposed to pray like this. Father, I want these people, my children, my, my church believers, my children, my sons, to be double of me. That's why Jesus said, whoever believes in me, he will do greater works in me. Pray like that. Good. Talk about the matter uh, whether he will supersede you or not. Nobody can supersede you. Because when the anointing of God is upon your life, nobody can take a ministry. And God will keep blessing you and keep. You know, it's just like a platform. It's just like a platform. If 10 people are normal lecturers and you are sitting as associates, okay, if the moment the 10 lecturers become associates, automatically you become group from. This is this is like a system. So whenever you pick up your people up, you are going up automatically. So don't worry. God is fair. He knows. Even if they want to take out the ministry, let them take. No problem. Because God will give you a better one. Today I want to encourage you. All English viewers, uh, I think I'm done. Uh, I will be talking the same thing for the uh, uh, Tamil people. Uh, so after this, you will have only communion. Okay, for the English speaking people, you can go and have a rest. You have a rest. Uh, only communion, if you want to join with us, it's okay. Uh, if you don't join us, it's fine. But this is the message that I want to tell to you. I love you so much. I want you to live in a new paradigm. Please, please, be like a small child. Be like a small child. And go back and read this verse, what is the new pattern is all about. And I'm encouraging you, you are the Jesus Christ of the land of Asia. You are supposed to be the answer, and you are supposed to be radiating, and you are sitting in heavenly places with your Father God, Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, descending from the whole world. Please don't talk about your problem. Start counting your stars. When the things are not happening, when things are impossible, it's the best time for you. The Father is going to be America. Love you all so much. Have a blessed day. God bless you.